My name is Ryan Darth Bader. I'm 24 years old and currently live in Phoenix, Arizona. I fight at the 205 pound division. I'm currently 6-0 with five stoppages. I graduated from Arizona State University in 2006 where I was a two-time Division I Wrestling All-American and three-time Pac-10 champion. I want to be on the Ultimate Fighter to showcase my skills on a bigger stage and ultimately reach my goal of one day having a UFC belt around my waist. Are you going to accept Bellator's or are you going to match Bellator's offer to Ryan Bader? No. We, 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 we were, uh, we had told Ryan Bader he was, he was good to go, so he, you know, we, we, we knew he was going to go to Bellator though, the entire time. Well, I think I think Bellator is a good place for Ryan Bader. I think it's I think that's that's a at this point in his career, I think I think it's the right move for him. A little bit of half hitch. That's his fate. And watch for that right. Oh! Ankles. These on the ankles? That on the ankles, yep. Now toes in, straight leggers. PFL was nice. Yeah, they were it's well run. Like I was impressed. Uh, I met Bader in 2011. Started working together um, before his Jason Brills fight in like November of 2011. It's been a while. It's been a fun ride, that's for sure. Yeah, there you go. Good one. When I first started working with these guys, um, I was newer to MMA too, so I was coming in thinking, you know, oh, these guys are professional athletes. I'd worked with football players and baseball players and stuff, and, and um, they really didn't have it set up like a professional training type system. So um, Bader was all years, and he's been a phenomenal student um, from the time that I met him. So telling him to kind of push during these times and pull back during these times, and, and okay, in between your fights, this is a little bit of off season time now, so now we can get a little bit stronger during this time. and, and he has embraced that wholeheartedly, and, and, and um, it, it shows in his his level of of the level of his game, and, and just uh, his injury prevention as well. That's a great way to make sure that we are um, staying healthy, is making sure that we're we're doing certain things at certain times, so we're not pushing too hard, leading right up to a fight, and then when we're coming back, we're not just jumping right back in. We're easing back into things, so we can be more like a professional sport, you know. So he has taken it where. In camp is basically like your in-season time and you're leading up to your championship, you know? And then after that, it's gonna be off-season again, so then we pull back and we get his body ready for that next season again. And, and he has embraced that from the start. And, and like I said, it shows. We've been relatively injury-free. I mean, barring a broken hand or something, that's gonna happen from the sport. And um, it's, 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 he's literally laying a blueprint for all the younger guys in here on how to get it done. I showed, I showed Bryce you can like pull that little box out of there without taking the ones off and he blew his mind, he blew his mind. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, purple one on there. Put it on the uh, second, so the middle one, not the full, yep. Yep. Just that one to start, set of 10. Thinking like one, 1,000, two, 1,000, pause. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. All control, all control. 
the consistency is absolutely key. I've seen so many guys come and go that haven't put the consistency in. See the guys that are behind you right now training, these guys are also the ones that have been the most consistent and they're at the highest levels of anybody in the gym. So it just shows that you follow, follow our leader, stay consistent, you're gonna get to where you wanna be. You really just have to be consistent and put in the work. There's, there's nothing else you can do. There's no magic pill, there's, there's no uh, piece of equipment or there's no one person or coach that's gonna make you into that. You know, you have to show up. You know, you can have the greatest coach in the world, but if you're not showing up, putting in that work, it's not gonna happen for you. If you're not consistent, it's not gonna happen for you. You know, I've been doing combat sports since I was seven years old, wrestling, and got into MMA and, and went from there. And I, I dedicated my whole career and life to that. And I put in the work and I know how to put in the work to achieve what I want to achieve. And so I have people ask me that all the time on social media or in person, hey, I want to be a UFC fighter. I want to be a Bellator fighter. I want to fight and uh, name the you know, organization. Um, you know, what can I do? I'm like, well, what's your background? Oh, nothing, I want, I want to start right now, I'm 22. And that's fine, it could happen. It could happen for you, but you got to put it in the work and you got to be consistent and you got to do the stuff that people don't want to do. And that drives everybody away. Travel the road of espionage from my soul. Now I'm really trying to expose who in the world has been a culprit. All of the cobras come out when it's time to open it now. When I'm steady dealing with doubt, like am I just a showman? I want to show them to everyone who's not looking so they can avoid the shook and surprise that are coming home. And I'm only been warming up. This is not my final form. Wait till I start showing up. Entering the final four. Don't care about brackets though. A triple threat is back by four. The runner up is done enough. The number one is masterful. Blast for me is last to me. It's simply how it has to be. To lay down the foundation for everyone coming after me. Nothing in life is handed. Not a reason to panic. We don't have to remain a victim. Even though we've all been damaged. I don't have to become what I was yesterday. I'm a brand new canvas. Obviously, the sport of MMA is is uh, a relatively newer sport. You know, obviously, there's been wrestling and different striking sports, all of that. But in the last 20, 30 years, MMA has really blossomed into the sport. So. Um, a lot of things change as, as the sport is growing and, and these guys have to change with it. You know, they used to have the old adage of, uh, it's about survival of the fittest. And I really don't think that's true in MMA anymore. It's, it's gonna be uh, whoever can adapt the most. Since the sport is tr changing so much, we as coaches, these guys as, as athletes have to adapt and, and uh, to be able to stay with it. If they don't, I think the sport's gonna pass them by and these young and up-and-comers that have been training MMA, not just wrestling, not just striking or anything like that, putting it all together from the moment that some of them could walk could end up passing these guys up. So I really feel like it's not just the strongest in the sport that's gonna survive, it's gonna be the most adaptable. And I really feel like Bader's been one of those guys that is making sure that he is staying with the times and making sure he's changing the training as he needs to, uh, not only for the sport, but for himself, you know, to make sure he has his longevity here. So. Um, I'm just happy to be along for the ride. It's been a lot of fun. Do you do you feel any added pressure? Because you know you could have very well signed with the UFC and done your thing there. And, you know, you're still a phenomenal fighter, still a top three guy in the division mm -hmm. or, you know, now you make the switch to belt or do you feel like there's pressure or you need to prove to anyone, your fans, your coaches, your team, maybe, maybe Dana White in the UFC that this was the right choice. Um, yes and no. I mean, yeah, I want to go in there. I want to, I want to win the belt. I want to hold it throughout my entire contract. So I'm an even better one, you know, but, um, you know, for me, it's, and you know how it is, every, every fight you go in, it doesn't matter if you're fighting an unranked guy or the number one guy in the world, you know, you, there's a ton of pressure that you put on yourself, you know, going into that fight. So every fight is a ton of pressure. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't care if the title's on the line or nothing is on the line but a, a win, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so that's how I kind of approach everything. I'm just going in there, training my butt off. When I walk into the cage, I know that I'll, I've done everything I could possibly do to prepare myself, and let's just fall where they may. That's all we can do in the sport. It's a crazy sport. You know, guys that are, uh, you can go out there um, as a huge favorite and lose, and, and vice versa, you know. So it's one of those things where I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to go out there and do my thing. 
um, and, uh, and get that belt. But um, that's all I can do, really, go out there and fight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Keith Peterson has called a stop to this contest. At one minute, 26 seconds of the very first round, declaring the winner by knockout, Anthony Rumble Johnson. So after the Anthony Johnson fight, you know, I went out there, game plan was go out there, take him down at some point, um, but whatever it was in my head, I went in there, took a bad shot, took some big punches, and it was done, it was over. It was a terrible feeling that this opportunity was gone you know, and, and I didn't make the best of it. So I brought that mindset into every single fight ever since then. Um, in training, I go back to that fight and say, do you want to feel like this? You know, coming back from the locker room from this fight, you know, um, being nervous before these fights, I'm like, just remember how you felt when you went out there and you got flustered and, and didn't fight you, to your potential. And so the next fight I go out there, I fight Ilya Latifi. You know, you're always nervous before a fight, but I kept going back to that fight. How do you want to feel after this fight? Let's go out there and give it your all. You know, and don't let any mind or any nerves or anything else get in the way of knowing what you could do. You go out there and get one of the biggest knockouts of my career. And ever since then, I haven't lost. Uh, no one outworks Ryan. I'll, I'll, I'll put him up against a lot of other guys. I don't know in particular, but I know that I will put him up against a lot of other people that, uh, that work hard. Um, he puts in the time, the effort. Um, and he'll even tell you, you know, six, seven, eight years ago, he was not a striker. He was a straight wrestler with an overhand right hand. Um, and now he is one of the more difficult guys to touch in a stand-up uh, situation, especially in boxing. We're boxing. We bring pros in here all the time. Afterwards, they're like, they're like, fuck, I can't even touch him. I can't hit him. And that's the same way when I feel I'm, I'm boxing with him. So I think his boxing is unbelievably underrated. And there's a reason why he went through that tournament without getting touched, right? Like, they're just... And, and all the guys, even back in the UFC days, uh, when people were fighting him, they'd be like, man, I didn't, I wasn't able to really touch him. He's, he's tough with distance. And you gotta be aware of that overhand right that he's had since day one. I've been in those fights where I don't need to prove anything to myself anymore. So, you know, in this tournament, I went out and uh, knocked out King Mo, 15 seconds. You know, and then I had a three round fight with Mitrione, which is mainly on the ground, grueling. You know, just a uh, uh, relentless pace on him. And then Fedor was, a, you know, 35 seconds or something like that. You know, that was the best way to cap that off, you know. Um, there, there's a certain part of me that wanted to see that fight play out a little more with Fedor and I, just to, just to uh, you know, he's one of the greatest of all time, and just to, to kind of gauge myself with him a little more. But, man, I'll take a knockout like that, like, every day because, I know what I have already. When I was younger, you know, it was a different story. I mean, Bellator really now is, like, it's a major player. Yeah. I mean, they have, like, major, major talent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, they don't get as much credit. Obviously, right. they're not the, the big a promotion, but they have some of the best fighters. You know? they, I mean, look, they, they've got Gegard Mousasi, yeah. they've got Rory McDonald. Yeah, Rory you, McDonald. Yeah, you can go down the list. It's, mm -hmm. and, how about fucking Ryan Bader, KO and Fader Dude. like that? Crazy. I, I, I thought Bader was going to win. I thought he was going to use his pressure and, and just wear on him and, and out-wrestle him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. Ten seconds.